Hi everyone. Uh, so in today's video, I'm going to be going through policy gradients. Uh, it's going to be an ad adaptation of Kapati's blog called Pong to Pixels. And um, what I'm going to be showing you is my twist on it by using Keras and um, more importantly, using convolutional networks. Right. So let's get started. Uh, I'm doing this on a Google Colab notebook, which I'll be sharing out to you so that you can uh, start playing with this yourself. Uh, yeah, so let's go. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing is install some libraries uh, for plotting. So JS animation, for example, is quite important. I'm not entirely sure that you need to do this anymore, but I've, I've done this in the past, so I can install that Jim Atari thing again. And uh, yeah, so the rest of it is importing libraries. Okay, so to get started with the actual environment, so the environment is called Pong Deterministic v4 okay so make sure you use the fourth version um, some of the other ones do some random behavior which i really don't want to be messing with uh, the action space that we have we have no operation fire right left uh, which doesn't make, really make much sense uh, because uh, in, in our case it's only uh, up, up and down action but what we what we want in our particular environment is right fire and left fire okay so the, the reason that we have the rest of them is because it's a artifact of Atari. Uh, so yeah, so those are the two actions that we're gonna be choosing. The, this function over here, what it does is it's going to help me show what I'm doing, right? So it's gonna do the plotting using JS animation. Uh, the first thing that I've done over here is I've taken random actions and uh, let the environment evolve, right? So uh, let me just show you what happens. The, the, main, the main line of this thing is this thing over here, okay, environment.step. And uh, so the first thing that I do is reset the environment so that there's nothing there. Uh, I save the frame, okay, so this, this is the line that saves the frame. I take a random action using these two lines, okay, so the first line over here is generating a probability distribution, okay, so it's going to give me a probability of going up and down. And according to that, I'm going to choose an action. Um, and that action goes into environment.step. Okay, so the reason that I have over here, this thing over here is uh, keep in mind that the action that I'm taking is actually called like four and five. Okay, so um, A will choose a number that will I'll put number zero and one. And out of those, uh, out of four and five, this, this line over here will choose that action. Anyway, not, not, not too important, it's just choose an action for me, and then we're gonna save our rewards. Um, yeah, so once I do that, this is, this is what we get, right? So completely random things, uh, it's not, not even trying to hit the ball, okay? It, it doesn't know what it's supposed to be doing in the first place, right? So all it knows is it has this reward function. Um, this, this function over here, I'm gonna come back to, uh, but let's keep going. Okay, pre-process functions. So this is one thing I am copying straight from Kapati's blog, right? So I'm, uh, there's nothing uh, coming from me. Essentially what it's doing is uh, the gym environment gives me a 210 by 160 by three uh, image, okay? I, and I'm gonna convert that into an 80 by 80 by one image. And the way that I do that is, first of all, I'm gonna crop, uh, crop this thing. So what I mean by crop is I don't really need the top of of the image, okay, because all it's doing is giving me, giving me uh, the score, okay, but I get the rewards back, right? So I'm not I'm not trying to uh, figure out what the rewards are, and then I downsample it horizontally and vertically by two. Okay, anyway, so I do a few of those things, and then I end up with um, end up with the eighty by eighty by one uh, image. All right, so yeah. And here we go. So here's the model. So one thing I should have done with naming is I really should have called it policy. Okay, so policy meaning which direction should I go? Should I go up or should I go down? Now, considering this image, you should straight away think convolutional networks. Uh, and that's exactly what I've done over here. So I've chosen three by three kernels. And all I've done is do the usual convolutional max pool, convolutional max pool, flatten them, uh, and then have one final dense layer. Okay, now the dense layer, um, I need to make sure that I end up with two. Okay, so there's only two actions that I take. 
So the length of the action space is two. Uh, and the activation is going to be a softmax. It's softmax because it's good. what I want is a probability that says uh, go up or go down. If it's really sure that it needs to go up, um, this, the softmax will give me some, a number really close to one or one in, one in itself. Okay. And the optimizer, or rather optimizer, you can choose Adam or whatever you want. But the loss in this case is, is going to be uh, the usual categorical cost entropy. And we'll talk about that soon. Uh, but essentially, just, just a quick idea, what, what you want is, um, did that action that we take, so given the, given the input of the image, that action that we took, did it lead to a win or a loss? And that's what we're going to be looking at over here. Okay, so let me, that, that's going to be a born concept. Let me come back to that. Um, all right, actually, we're going to do that right now. Um, let me jump to Kapati's blog. So Kapati's blog down over here. Uh, okay, here we go. So what he's done um, in this thing is he's got four episodes, right? So the it, it ran for one iteration, it trained, it ran for another iteration, trained, and so on. Okay, so it's done this four times. In the first iteration, these nodes over here, what it's doing is the model input. Okay, so think of the model input, and then the arrows are the actions that we took. And then finally, what was the outcome? So for that particular image, we went up. For the next image, the model said go down, and so on. And because we, because we end up winning, what we want to do is um, we want to encourage these actions that we got. Okay, so if we were to see the exact same images again, what we want to do is we want to encourage these things. Okay, so we're going to positively uh, weight all these actions that was taken. All right, so the next time, the, the new model that we get, um, we end up losing, right? So given, again, those images that we saw at these nodes, we want to discourage them and so on. So that's exactly what we want, we're going to be continuously doing until our model improves. Okay, so... Um, The key thing that, that needs, okay, so the, the, there's, there's four components of this, okay? So the first uh, component is how we store our X's. Now I said images, but what's actually happening is we're gonna be taking two consecutive images and we're gonna take the difference of them. Okay, so the input of the model is the difference between two frames. If it's the very first frame, um, well, what do we do? Um, yeah, we put in just zeros, okay? So we're gonna be choosing random action. Um, and then second frame onwards, we're going to be taking the difference of two frames. And from those two frames, we're going to predict. Um, and from the prediction, because remember the prediction is only giving a probability distribution, we choose an action randomly from that particular probability. Okay, and then we store that action as well. So keep in mind, we're storing the, the difference of the frames, we're storing the action that we took, and then we're going to, choose, uh, we're the, we're going to store the reward. Okay, the way that we get the reward is, remember, environment.step. Okay, so once this goes through a thousand time steps, which is something that I de define up here, okay, so the buffer um, thing over here, uh, sorry, I lie, if it either hits this buffer limit or if uh, the environment deems it's done, so, so for example, if I lose far too many times, it, it will finish, um, in, in our particular case, if I lose 21 times, it will finish the, the, the game. Um, in that case, I, what, I, what I want to do is I want to fit the model. Okay, so once, once, it, once it's all done a thousand times or whatever it is, I want to send the Xs, the Ys, and then the, the rewards that are stored into my um, model.fit. And this part, at least, should be very familiar to you. So this is no different from your usual supplies learning. But the key difference, so this is the important part with uh, policy uh, gradients. You weight each of those, um, say, thousand, so thousand steps, you weight each of them with um, this reward function. I will talk about this function, this, this kind of standards in a bit, but let me just show you what my rewards look like at least.
So my R's look like this. So see, notice how there's ones and negative ones over here. So what I can do for starters, it's to say, okay, in this particular case, for that uh, difference in images, I end up winning. Uh, so I want to encourage that action. And in this case, I end up losing, I want to discourage that action. Okay, so that's that's the weighting that we get. But every the problem is that everything in the middle are zeros. And that's a, and that's a bad thing. Okay, so it's it's saying like don't worry about everything that happened in between, um, that didn't do anything, which is which is false, right? So um, there's this concept called delayed rewards in reinforcement in general. Um, so the idea is that there was action that happened in the past that led to this win right now, okay? And it, and it definitely wasn't just the last action that we took. So what we want to do is we want to um, we want to do this thing called discounting. So if if it's one over here, we want the one before that to be 0 0.99, the one before that to be 0 0.99 squared, 0 0.99 cubed, and so on. All right. So this is a process called discounting. So let's go back to that function that I skipped. Okay. So um, now this comes from the Bellman equation, right? So the Bellman equation says the, the current reward is the reward that we just got plus gamma, which is the discounting factor, 0.99, multiplied by the future um, sum of rewards. Okay, so it says running addition is a sum of rewards. Um, and yeah, so the discount, like I, I could have, I suppose I could have done that straight over here, but you know, you want to save the running, uh, running sum, okay? In Pong, in particular, when it's a non-zero reward, okay, so uh, if we go here, see the, the negative ones or ones, what happens is that the game resets, okay? So there, there's a very specific thing to Pong. Uh, what you need to do for my, for my discount thing is I need to reset the running addition to zero, okay? So for everything else, I wouldn't, like I wouldn't be commenting this line out, but in the case of Pong, uh, I need to have that in, right? Um, so yeah, so that's what you do. You take in those rewards and then you turn the discount uh, version of it. We have this additional function called standardizing, um, which I don't entirely understand, but let me just try and explain how I understand. So what you do is you take these discount rewards, you minus the mean, you divide by standard deviation. Um, and the way that Karpathy explains it at least is that you want half your rewards to be positive, okay, so that leading up to the last, uh, leading up to the thousand thing you want it to be positive and the, the rest of it to be negative. Um, that, that's that's a rough rough kind of uh, idea, right? So you want some actions good, some actions bad. Um, why does it work? I'm, I'm not entirely sure. It seems a bit arbitrary, but it's, it, it does seem to be doing some sort of something to accelerate the, the training. So anyway, uh, I've left that there. But the important bit is the discount thing. So this thing you must do, okay? So that's non-negotiable. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, and that's, that's, really, that's really pretty much it as far as the training goes. You, you store your Xs, which in this case is difference of frames. You store the actions that you took. You store the rewards. And once that's run up until it's done or a thousand, a buffer a thousand is hit, you train your model, right? So, and the, the, Again, just to reiterate, the key difference is that you have the sample weighting, which is the discounted rewards. Okay, so this line over here is doing the discounting. The rest of the code over here is, is pretty much my boilerplate code where I save the losses, save the rewards, and um, yeah, it's not, it's not really important. Um, but yeah, okay, so here we go. How does the training go? Um, the average reward in the beginning is really close to negative 21. Um, it, I think it doesn't go negative below negative 21, sorry, below negative 20 because uh, it, it gets cut off at that point. Um, but yeah, so, but there are random things that lead to a win, um, which is why it's, why it's negative, it's not negative 20 exactly. All right, so those random wins are really the crucial things that help uh, train this model. Okay, so we start exploring, exploring that random this tiny random times that we did win, and eventually the reward is increasing. 
Okay, so we're at, at the end, we're still losing, but just by two points compared to losing by 20 points over here. Okay, so let's do like this. And yeah, so if I was to plot the rewards, this is how it looks. Okay, now the other thing that I plotted is the losses as well. The losses, unfortunately, don't give me a good picture of what's, uh, what's going well, if it's training at all, uh, if I'm being perfectly honest. But the rewards do, okay? So the sums of rewards, I should, I should say. Um, yeah, so just to show you the result of what happens. So this time around, it, so yeah, so you can see it's actually bouncing back. It's actually going for the ball. Which is really important, right? So before it wasn't; it was just moving around randomly. It didn't really know. So this time it's trying to intercept the ball. Of course, we're still losing, but we're not losing by much, right? So the score over here, yeah. So we, by the end of thousand, uh, thousand runs, thousand steps, like we're slightly ahead. Okay, which is which is really good. Um, I did end up training for a thousand more because. I want to see if I can do a, a bit better than what I've got so far. And unfortunately, it didn't really improve much. So I started up at negative two, and I got it down to negative 0.8. So um, given that I'm only letting it run for 1,000 episodes, 1,000 steps, sorry, um, it's not really improving as such. So yeah, and, and, and things like this happen quite often. So we're, we've got a decent, improvement and then all of a sudden it just dips, right? So you'll see this in reinforcement learning in general, not just false gradients. There are all these frustrating moments where uh, you tend to lose the training uh, or all the gains that you've got so far. Um, anyway, so just to show you, yeah, so in, in this case, if I, if I run this thing, we end up, we actually end up far worse. Um, yeah, so 8.8, eight, okay. So we didn't really improve um, significantly at all in this uh, in the second uh, run of thousand um i'll let you i'll, I'll leave the code for up, up to you to play um now before i go just just some uh, last comments um and this is uh pulse the gradients um i didn't touch anything on the gradients um which you might have noticed because um Keras takes care, care of the gradients aspect for you now if you were to read kapati's blog you will see uh, a lot of talk about gradients, but that's because he implemented that in NumPy, right? So, um, in fact, he implemented even the uh, the deep networks in, in, in NumPy, and that's why he needed to talk about gradients. But Keras takes care of that part for you. Um, the second thing that I want to mention is um, the way to improve this isn't isn't using vanilla vanilla pulse gradients. So there's a, another thing called uh, TRPO, so Trusted Region Policy Optimization, and that uh, reuses uh, your previous um, so, so you, you would have noticed that after one episode I get rid of all my X's and my Y's and my R's and then I start again right but you can you do have some information saved over there and uh, that can be useful which which I dismiss um, so so in, in my next episode I might actually go through other reinforcement learning techniques um, that's it for this particular episode um, I hope you improve this current kind of thing. If you have questions or comments, please do ask. Uh, but otherwise, thanks for watching and please subscribe. Thank you.